Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this 11th lecture of this course. So this 11th lecture is on nanomaterials for cancer diagnosis. So let us see what is the difference between cancer and tumour. Okay. The cells that continue to replicate and fail to differentiate into specialized cells and become immortal. This is called as cancer cells or tumour cells. And the main difference between the cancer and tumour is uh, malignant cells. Okay. So a tumour that grows indefinitely and spreads that is called as metastasis. Okay. As, and it is also called as cancer cells and which kills the host. And the beginning is a tumour that is not capable of metastasis and does not kill the host. So the main difference between the cancer and tumour is the tumour cells are localised and it grow indefinitely. Okay? And it, it grows more number of cells in a particular location and it could be removed by surgery. But in case of cancer, the tumour cells spread from one location to other location and uh, it is going to kill the host that is called as cancer. So these are the various types of cancer, carcinoma. So it is arising from the epithelial tissues such as glands, uh, breast and skin. Okay. So this carcinoma constitutes mostly like 90 percent of all the cancers. And again sarcoma is a solid tumours of muscles and bone. It is uh, 2 percent of all the cancers. And leukemia is a bone marrow, disease of bone marrow. Okay. So this is constituting 3.4 percent of all cancers. And lymphoma and myeloma, this is constituting like approximately 5.4 percent of all the cancers. So let us see what is the reason for the cancer. The first reason is genetic factors. It may be due to mutations or it may be due to translocation and it may be also due to hereditary. Okay? And next reason is environmental factors like UV or chemicals or viral infections. So if a person is working in some chemical industry, he has high chance for getting the cancer. And uh, what is happening in the cancer? The conversion of proto-oncogenes to oncogenes. So each cell will be having proto-oncogenes. All the cells will be having proto-oncogenes. If the proto-oncogenes is converted into oncogenes, the normal cell became a cancer cell. And also the alteration in the tumor suppressor genes. So each cell we have tumor suppressor genes which suppress the tumor growth. Okay, and which uh, if there is a uh, some alteration in the tumor suppressor genes, there is a high chance for getting the tumor or cancer. So this growth promoting proto-oncogenes and growth restricting tumor suppressor genes, this should be properly balanced for a control of cell growth. So if there is an imbalance, the conversion of proto-oncogenes to oncogenes will happen and it leads to altered tumor suppressor genes. So due to this, what happens is there will be an uncontrolled cell growth. So that is called as tumor. So the uncontrolled cell growth is a tumor and if the tumor spreads from one location to other location that is called as cancer and the spreading is called as metastasis. And the interesting fact about the cancer is at least once a day your immune system destroys a cell that would become a cancer cell if it lived. That means uh, every day at least some cells are trying to become a cancer cell. If your immune system is strong, it can destroy the cancer cell. So let us see this animation. So this uh, the long cell is the cancer cell and this one is the T cell that is your immune cells. So it is coming and attacking your cancer cell and destroying it. That means if your immune system is strong, it will at least protect you from developing cancer or tumour. So what is the major problem in the cancer diagnosis? The main problem is we are not able to diagnose a cancer in the early stage. So with the present traditional methods, we are able to diagnose a cancer only in the later stage and in the later stage, we have to go for uh, uh, targeted treatment or we have to go for radiation and chemotherapy. So by using nanotechnology, we can go for early detection of cancer and we can protect the person from the cancer death. So this is a biomarker research status. Okay. So this PSA means prostate specific antigen. Suppose if the person is having more amount of PSA, that means he has high chance for getting prostate cancer. So that is the today's biomarker research status. So if some person is diagnosed with a uh, more level of PSA that means he has high chance for prostate cancer. So let us see the biomarker resistance status in future. 
So, in future we will be able to tell you the prostate specific antigen is over expressed, but also we can also check it what are the other markers involved in this expression. Okay. So, based on that we can tell like if it is a BM1 or 2 or 3 and we can give drug according to that. So, here in this example you can see here the marker 1, 2, 3 are in off condition and marker 4 is subnormal and for example, the marker 5 is fine. So, there is no metastasis. Okay. So, we can go for treatment accordingly. So, each cancer have several kind of markers or receptors on the top. Okay. So, we can easily detect which type of marker is over expressed or which type of marker is down regulated. So, accordingly we can select the drug and we can target and start the treatment process and which will save a lot of time as well as we are not giving more amount of drug concentration to the particular person. So, this is called as uh, personalized medicine instead of giving the generalized medicines. So, if I suppose the person is having cancer instead of giving a uh, medicine for all the 5 types of markers, we can give drug only to attack the particular marker. So, instead of giving the generalized medicine, we can give the personalized medicine. For example, if the marker 1 is over expressed, we can give drug only to suppress the marker 1 instead of giving drugs for all the various markers. Okay. So, that will enhance the therapeutic efficiency. So, let us see the another example. So, here the nano devices can make cancer test faster and more efficient. So, you can see the example this is a patient A and patient B and we can uh, check all the pathways and everything and also is sensitivity to drug and we can give the drug according to the patient's need. So, in this patient A you can see here the growth pathways are ok and cell mobility is ok and he is sensitive for drug A and in case of patient B he is sensitive to drug B and cell death pathways and everything is ok. So, the cancer even though the both have the prostate cancer, so they will be having a different kind of uh, need like as I told you like they will be having expressing the different kind of biomarkers. So, we can give the drugs to the specific need that is called as personalized medicine. So, in the cancer diagnosis uh, various nanomaterials play important role. The main important nanomaterial is quantum darts. Okay. So, the quantum darts are highly fluorescent nanometer size single crystals of semiconductor materials okay. and uh, with respect to size it will give a different color and the size is tunable between 5 to 50 nanometer. So, based on the size it will giving different fluorescence that is the advantage of this quantum darts and here the optical properties of nanoparticles depend greatly on its structure particularly the color okay, emitted by the quantum dart and depends on the diameter. So, as I told you depends on the size it is going to give different kind of colors. So, here the quantum darts can be injected to a subject and then be detected by exciting them to emit light. Okay. But the quantum darts are uh, toxic and it is not biocompatible. So, how to make the quantum darts biocompatible and also soluble? So, we have to engineer these quantum darts you can see here this is your core nano crystal which determines the color and we have to give an inorganic uh, shell. This, are, this will improve the brightness and stability and followed by we have to give the organic coating. So, that will provide the water solubility and functional groups for conjugation. So, we can add any antibody or peptides okay, and we can specifically target these quantum dots for uh, cancer diagnosis. So, you can see here this example. So, the quantum dots are uh, not fluorescence when you apply the UV light it will emit light. So, here you can see that the quantum darts are attached with some antibodies which is specifically go and bind to the cancer cell. So, when the quantum darts bind to the cancer cells and when you apply the light, so only the cancer cells will emit fluorescence and uh, healthy cells there is no fluorescence. So, we can easily diagnose the cancer cell and quantum darts have excellent brightness and photostability. So, in this example you can see the difference between the quantum dart and organic dye. So, here you can see here the exposure time required for quantum dot is 0 0.019 seconds and organic dye it need 1.22 seconds. So, in this picture the first two picture is uh, the cancer cell which have high level of expression of particular cancer marker that means it is a like the cancer cell which is expressing more number of markers. Okay. And here you can see here when compared to the organic dye the quantum tarts is showing 50 times brighter. Okay. And another thing is and if there is a cancer cell which is expressing low level of markers and when you use the quantum dot and organic dye, in organic dye there is no fluorescent signal. It will give a false negative result that means the person is having the cancer, but when you use the organic dye for diagnosis there is no fluorescent signal. 
So we may get result like uh, the person is negative for cancer, but the person is having the cancer. When you use the quantum dots, you can see here it is giving a fluorescent signal. Even if it is a low level expression of markers, and the quantum dots is able to bind and it is able to give the fluorescent signal. So that is the advantage of this quantum dots. And another advantage is, as I told you, with respect to size, it will give the different kind of fluorescence. And when you use the traditional organic dyes, so there is a chance for overlapping of the fluorescence. And in this case, there is no overlapping of fluorescence and there is no crosstalk. And this diagnosis should be multiplexed. That means, as I told you earlier, the cancer cells will have multiple biomarkers. So that should be detected simultaneously. Okay. So there's this example you can see here, this cancer cell is expressing different types of markers on the surface. For example, this is a blue color or purple color or red color. Okay. So this is a different kind of markers are expressing on the surface of the cancer cell. So the diagnosis should be also multiplexed because the different phenotypes will show different aggressiveness on their metastatic behavior. So it depends on their marker. So we will come to know whether he, the person is in the early stage of cancer or he is in the uh, advanced stage of cancer. So let us see the multiplex diagnosis. Here four quantum dots of different diameter that is different color are respectively functionally with four different antigen. That means for example, if a cancer cell is expressing four different kind of markers or receptors and these quantum dots will go and bind to the four uh, respective markers or receptors. And if all the four is giving fluorescence, that means the person is in the advanced stage of cancer. For example, out of four, only two or one is giving a fluorescence signal, that means the person is in the early stage of cancer. So here you can see here, this is the early stage of cancer and this is the advanced stage of cancer and it is the two receptors. So it means we can say that the difference between the early stage and advanced stage using this multiplex diagnosis. And uh, a research team from uh, Quantum Dot Corporation, so they made a quantum dot to identify live breast cancer cells okay and uh, this technology is available for a mouse model and we can also use it for various cell biology applications okay but the use of the same quantum dots in humans require extensive research to determine the long term effects of administering the quantum dots because as i told you earlier these quantum dots are made up of heavy metals so use of quantum dots for human application it need lot of uh, research and lot of clinical trials so that it could be useful for human applications also so let us see another example where they use the quantum dots attached to uh, some antibodies. Okay, so that will go and specifically bind to the prostate tumor sites in the living mice, and uh, where they clump together and it will be visible under a simple mercury lamp. So they injected this uh, quantum dots, which is specifically go and bind to the prostate cancer, and when you apply this light, it will give the fluorescent signal. So it will be easy for uh, diagnosing the cancer in the mouse model. Let us see the another nanomaterial that is carbon dots. So these carbon dots are fluorescent nanomaterials. So that have emerged recently providing an alternative to conventional toxic metal based quantum dots. Okay. So these carbon dots are made up of carbon and it is highly biocompatible and eco friendly. Okay. And these carbon dots are small in size 2 to 50 nanometer and it is mainly composed of element carbon and also carbon dots exhibit unique optical properties such as uh, high photostability, broad excitation spectra okay, and also size dependent emission wavelength similar to the quantum dots. So you can see the difference between the quantum dots and carbon dots. So quantum dots are made up of heavy metal, so it will have toxicity and carbon dots are mostly carbon sources, so it is highly biocompatible and the synthesis is difficult and here the synthesis are very simple and uh, difficult for surface functionalization and here it is readily surface functionalization. And as I told you earlier, it is poor aqueous solubility and here it is highly water soluble. So let me explain the synthesis of carbon dots by a simple method. Okay. And uh, here we can use this chitosan as a carbon source and a polyethylene glycol 4000 as your uh, passivating agent. And this could be mixed in a uh, water plus uh, sulfuric acid and then you can apply this microwave radiation using the domestic microwave oven. Okay. Due to the dehydration process, you will get the surface passivated multicolor carbon dots. Okay. So this protocol uh, we developed in your lab. Uh, so let me explain the protocol. So we can make the carbon dots by microwave pyrolysis method. So here we are using this 0.2 gram of chitosan as a carbon source, so which was added to the solution containing 25 ml of water and 4 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. Then add 
0.2 gram of polyethylene glycol 4000 to the above solution and stir at 500 rpm for 15 minutes and subject the solution to microwave irradiation using a domestic microwave oven. So, in this case we have used IFB microwave oven and operating at an 100 percentage power level that is 700 watt for different cyclic times so that means 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off. So, at the end of the reaction you will get a brown color dark brown color solution okay then allows the solution to cool naturally to room temperature then uh, centrifuge the obtained dark brown solution at 14000 rpm for 15 minutes to separate the less fluorogenic insoluble black deposit from the fluorogenic LOS brown supernatant and this LOS brown supernatant is an indicate of formation of carbon dots. So, by using this simple protocol we can make the uh, fluorescent carbon dots in your lab using the simple domestic microwave oven and any carbon source. And this is a comparison of in vivo imaging between the carbon dots and quantum dots. So, when they use the mouse model and they injected this carbon dots, the top one is carbon dots and the bottom one is quantum dots. So, this quantum dots is commercial quantum dots and this is a carbon dots. So, it is giving equal efficiency. So, this carbon dots are giving equal efficiency to the quantum dots and again the another advantage is the carbon dots are highly biocompatible. So, this carbon dots will play a major role in cancer diagnosis in the near future. So, let us see the another example that is chemical nose. Suppose if you want to identify the rotten apple in a bunch of apples, so you can just smell it and tell which apple is rotten okay instead of doing chemical analysis. So, similarly we can make a chemical nose okay. So, that chemical nose can be injected into the person and uh, it will bind to the only cancer cell and tell you whether the particular person is having cancer or not okay. So, this chemical nose is made up of three different types of nanoparticles, nanoparticle 1, 2, 3 and these are functionalized gold nanoparticles and these nanoparticles are wrapped with fluorescent reporter polymer okay. So, you can see here if the person is having a cancer he will be having various markers on the cell surface and you can see here this is the nanoparticles and covered with the polymer and here the fluorescence is off. So, when this nanoparticle bind to the cancer cell and uh, this will remove the polymer. So, once the polymer is removed it will give the fluorescence signal okay the here the fluorescence will be on. For example, this is yellow fluorescence, this is red fluorescence and this is green fluorescence that means if all the fluorescence is on that means the person is in the advanced stage of cancer. Suppose out of this only the one particular polymer is giving the fluorescence signal that means we can say he is in the early stage of cancer due to expression of the particular marker. So, accordingly we can uh, give the drug to the person for cancer therapy. And we can also uh, diagnose using nano thermometers okay. So, the cancer cells appear to have more elevated temperature than normal cells okay. So, therefore, a local temperature mapping can be used to determine the spread of tumor. So, when compared to the normal person the cancer cells will be having more metabolism and there will be more generation of heat at the particular location. And we can make a gold nanoparticle functionalized with PEG that is polyethylene glycol coating okay and on the top of that we can add the quantum dots and the emission properties of nanoparticle change with respect to temperature due to the stretching and contraction of the polyethylene glycol. You can see here inside is gold nanoparticle and the top layer is polyethylene glycol it is a polymer and uh, the topmost layer is your quantum dots. So, if there is a change in the temperature the polymer will stretch or it will shrink. So, according to that it will give the different kind of fluorescence. So, here you can see here this is a healthy person and this is a sick person. So, there is a temperature difference. So, based on that we can easily diagnose the breast cancer and based on the temperature and uh, emission we can easily identify whether the person is in the early stage of cancer or advanced stage of cancer. And let us see what is the role of nanomaterials in the uh, traditional methods like uh, CT scan or MRI scan how we can uh, improve those techniques by using these nanomaterials. So, computer tomography that is a CT or CAT scan okay it is a fast and relatively inexpensive way to diagnose disease and this approach involves the passage of x-rays through the patient and the x-ray source and detector are moved related to a target area in the body okay. If the ionated compound localizes in the fluid surrounding disease tissue the contrast between the diseased and normal tissue will be enhanced. So, thereby allowing the physician to arrive uh, conclusion like whether what is the state of the disease and what is the progression of the disease okay. And to increase the scattering between the diseased and normal tissue 
patients are often given iodinated organic compounds. That means in the traditional methods like a CT scan, so the patient will be given iodine compound okay, and you will be applying the x-rays to diagnose the difference between the diseased tissue and the normal tissue. And here we can use the gold nanoparticle. Okay. So, we can use the gold nanoparticle coated with polyethylene glycol and uh, it will allow the gold nanoparticle to escape from rapid removal by the reticular endothelial system which is responsible for removing the foreign matter from the blood. So, when you coat the gold nanoparticle from the polyethylene glycol, it will give the biocompatibility and also it will allow the nanoparticle to escape from the immune system. So, here when you use the gold nanoparticle for CT scan, so the absorption of X-rays by gold nanoparticle is 1.9 times greater than the iodine containing organic molecule. Okay. So, when you use the gold nanoparticle for CT scan, it is improving the efficiency 2 times more than the normal iodine compound. Okay. So, this will reduce the exposure of patient to the X-rays and uh, it will be having high sensitivity. Okay. So, let us see how these uh, nanoparticles can improve the MRI magnetic resonance imaging. So, gadolinium is an ideal ion for enhancing the contrast in magnetic resonance imaging. Here we can use a single wall carbon nanotubes okay, which are usually uh, 1000 nanometer long and by pyrolysis that means you are uh, treating these carbon nanotubes at 1000 degree Celsius, this carbon nanotubes can be broken into 20 to 100 nanometer long and due to pyrolysis there will be a pit formation. So, that is a missing carbon atoms on the surface. And we can add the uh, gadolinium ions to these carbon nanotubes and you can do the sonication. So, when you do the sonication, this gadolinium ions will go and bind to the pit region. So, the advantage of this uh, gadol nanotubes is low concentration of this gadol nanotubes could be used to bring about the same level of MRI enhancement as produced by the other agents. Okay. So, here we are using the low concentration of contrast agents. So, that will be beneficial to the patient. You can see here this is a carbon nanotubes and due to pyrolysis there is a pit formation. When you add the gadolinium and do the sonication, this gadolinium can come and attach to these surfaces. So, this is called as gado nanotubes and which will enhance the MRI imaging. And we can also use the magnetic nanoparticles for MRI contrast enhancement. So, you can make an ionized nanoparticle that is ionized nanoparticle usually nitrily charged. So, we can add a positively charged poly electrolyte. So, when you add this uh, your, your cell membrane is nitrily charged. So, it can easily bind to the cell uh, by its positive charge through electrostatic interaction and it will enhance the MRI contrast. And next example is to this ionized nanoparticles we can also add uh, antibodies which can specifically go and bind to the cancer cell and it can also improve the uh, MRI contrast. So, another example is we can do the gold coating to form core shell morphology of ionized nanoparticles. So, here your ionized will be in the middle and uh, following you will be ha having gold coating. Okay. So, the gold surface can be readily conjugated with various biomolecules and uh, it will be having like a multiple function like you can use the ionized for MRI enhancement also the gold is also will enhance the MRI contrast enhancement. So, let us see how to make a paper based diagnostic for cancer. So, recently Professor Sangeeta Bhatia, so from MIT they developed a paper based diagnostic kit that can detect the cancer by identifying biomarkers in the patient's urine. So, let me explain uh, to understand a simple way. So, what they have done is they have taken a nanoparticles and conjugated with the some peptides. Okay. And usually the cancer cell express some amount of protease. So, this protease will specifically break the peptides tagged to these nanoparticles. Okay. So, this peptides will be broken into small small pieces. So, that will be excreted through the urination process. Okay. So, when you add the drop of urine to the paper based kit, so this paper based kit will have antibody specific for your the peptides. Okay. So, when the peptides comes and bind to this, it will give a color line. So, if the person 
he is getting this kind of color line that means he is positive for the cancer. So, it is a simple paper based kit. So, they made a nanoparticle and attached a peptide okay, and cancer cells will produce some kind of protease and this protease will specifically cleave these peptides and break, in, break the peptides into small small pieces and this will be excreted in the urine and this paper based kit will be having antibodies specific for the peptides and these antibodies are tagged with some kind of color beads. So, if the peptides come and bind to this it will form a kind of color line that means the person is positive for the particular cancer. And another example is like uh, we thought that pregnancy test kit is only for the female. So, you can see here, so if the person is pregnant there will be two lines and if the person is not pregnant there will be one line. So, this is a simple uh, pregnancy test kit. We thought this pregnancy test kit is only for female. So, recently they found this if a man takes a pregnancy test kit and if it gets positive result it means he is most likely to have testicular cancer. So, if the person the man is getting a positive for pregnancy test kits that means he has higher chance for testicular cancer. So, there are several uh, methods available for cancer diagnosis okay. and every day some new new discoveries are coming in this field for advancing the early diagnosis of cancer. So, as a summary in this lecture we have learnt uh, what is cancer and what are the various nanomaterials available for cancer diagnosis and we have also learnt what is quantum dots and carbon dots and uh, how we can improve the CT scan as well as MRI using these nanomaterials. Okay. So, I will end my lecture here. I thank you all for listening. I will see you in another interesting lecture.